Hello there everyone and welcome to another video about learning Grasshopper and today we're taking a look at how to manipulate almost all of data structures inside Grasshopper in order to have more control with your data and manipulation of it. And especially we're taking a look at reverse, flatten, graph and simplify. So if you want to learn about that, then let's get started. Okay, great. So just to start off, we have just a number of points here. Those are 19 points that are all over here. And then we create a partition that partition those points into groups of basically eight. And this group then is get partitioned more again. So in the end result, basically in the first one, we have those groups of eight. So you see here, zero, zero, then we have eight values. And then zero, one, we have eight values again. And then zero, two, we have only th three values because the list is just has to be partitioned in the size of eight. Then this list gets partitioned further into size of three and two. And this then results in the first one at the zero, 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 one in a partition of three. Here at a partition of two, then three again, then two. Um, yeah, then three again, and then we go into the next list, which then does three, two, three, and then we go on the last list, and there we only get one, like of the last partition, we only get one, uh, another, let's say, group or branch of it. So this then results in this kind of uh, looking tree, so the that you can get by actually by parent viewer. It either looks like that, you see, we have, um, the data with the branches here, or we can just double click it and then we have a visual representation of it. So now what is interesting about that? When we go on points, we can right click it and then also take a look at the uh, visual part of it. It's just basically, by the way, like a vector, we just made a vector and then we made anchor on that vector and then we put a point in there as well and put it a bit higher. So it's a little bit above the ground. So when we have this point, and when we right click it, we can modify it, especially with reverse, flatten, graft, and simplify. So why is it important? Well, those are the commands that you are going to use very often. And they are also available with normal commands. So for example, with reverse, there's the component, component reverse. You can find it under list and then here reverse list. You can also find simplify and actually with a boolean that makes the front basically disappear or like be simplified again as well but we get to that later then the flatten tree command which also gives give us an option to assign a path to it then the graph tree and then also trim tree which is kind of a flatten tree but a little bit different you will see so what does the things actually do so here right now we have those points here right those points that we create here in the beginning. If you're gonna flatten them, you see they go into just one branch, it's just one. It's just one data branch with 19 values in them. That's all, when we're gonna, when we're gonna graph them. And then I can obviously like uh, remove the graph and then you see the normal data structure again. So what it basically did, we have all those values in those different branches or sub branches, so this is like um, you know, the main branch was just zero, 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 zeros. And then we have the first branch, which did the partitioning of this first time with the eight. And then we have another partition, which puts in the three and the twos, how we did it here. So that was the flat command, basically, which just, you know, it just makes everything flat, extremely flat. And you see it, for example, like here as well, it's just like you basically remove all the entries of the tree. If we're gonna take this command, we can also, also, as you see now, it is the data branch of zero. And if we're going to just put this in here and do a little work around like this, you see we can give it any branch number we want up here. This could be actually useful 
in case you wanna have this tree flattened to a sp specific graph so you can use it for further data connection kind of later. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Um, this is actually a more simpler one, which is just the reverse one. So if we right click it and click reverse, you see it changes around. Like it's here, he now, for example, here one is a zero and one. And if I reverse it, it's one and zero. So it basically just changes around the direction. Um, you can also, if you reverse it, then you can also flatten it. And as you see, this kind of gives us a very interesting result. And I think it's actually, it should be important which direction this be, because if you flatten it first, and then reverse it. Ah, okay, no, it does it still in, it, it still does the flattening first. So you have to keep that in mind. But if you would do, if you would take the um, flatten one first, so we flatten it, and then we're gonna reverse it. It's just gonna reverse everything back and forth. So keep that in mind, that like the order of putting it through it is important as well. Okay, great. So now we want to take it into the next one, which is the graphed one. And again, we right click, and then, whoa, what the fuck, what happens? So it basically made each of those partitioning lists just like into one individual piece. So as you see here, we have before, if we didn't graft it, we had um, the list length being three. And when we're grafting it, we have another branch, but those branch then has three different like sub branches that are created in here. And um, when I, for example, take this data and then I'm gonna graft again. Whoops, no, I've not graft it. It will just create another one of those. But as you see, it doesn't really kind of do anything, it just adds another to it. So if you know, I just take another one, for example, just with measure, like this, you see, and then I'm gonna graft it again, and just adds another basically depth to it. So now that is an interesting part where simplify or trim tree can come in very handy. So um, we're not gonna use this one here. Um, I'm just gonna, for good measure, just add another one in the mix. When I would trim the tree, it removes basically those pieces here. So if I say, okay, I wanna trim into the depth two, it removes two of those things in here. So just put this in here, and you see it removes two of those. And we can also obviously remove further ones. And then we go basically back to the way how it was for the partitioning and before the partitioning the first time. It doesn't mean it goes always, it does reverse the things that you did, but it just um, reverses the, the depth of how the tree structure is um, defined. And for example, you can see it here as well. I think you see we go further in, further in, and then when we cut off each of the branch pieces, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's just basically flattened. So it's like a, you could almost see it as a um, gradient to flattening, depending on how you want to, like uh, how deep you want to have your tree data structure to be less. Can okay, if I put this stuff up, up here? Uh, it was not connected with the points before, but now it is. So you see it creates um, this kind of combination of it as well. And if you be careful with the trim tree command, because if you trim it even further than it even has things, then you basically remove the whole tree and it just gives you zero output. So just keep that in mind. Um, great. Now, if we take a look at the simplify, it actually does something kind of similar. So, um, well, it doesn't really, but it kind of, um, doesn't remove things, but it just removes things that are not essential to it. Because as you see here, those things are just doing the same thing, right? 
and we can see this if we double click it we can see this by representing those like zeros and zeros it's just like one value again so if we take the simplify tree we can either like well obviously right click it and just click simplify and then you see it removes um the zeros from it and it basically makes the tree like a lot more like the tree look a lot more clearer a lot more like how it kind of should be looking without the, all this like kind of zero or zero noise can be very useful sometimes when you dealing with very huge tree structures and then you have to merge everything back together in a more sensible way um but if you're going to use the command or the, like simplify tree you can see, find it under set tree and then simplify um and we're gonna just copy this over here um it kind of does the same when you set the boolean to true or i have to wait i oh, know the other way around um when you set the boolean to false it does the same as if you would just um simplify it just straight out of the gate out of the gate however if we're taking the simplified tree here um and if you toggle it to true it doesn't remove the end branches so normally it also removes the end branches over here but in this case it just removes the front branches like you see here there was a front branch in here but in this case it just removes this one and not the last one and if you set this to false and this is actually i think the default value as well it just removes uh, the thing straight out and obviously if you just put it in here and if you're just going to use the simplify command here right click simplify then it just straight out does that there are some special cases where you might want to have them still like uh, be more deep in the tree and still with zeros but just the beginning um, like modified um, yeah good let's make this tree look a little bit uh, normal again um, by actually trimming it down trim tree like this and that's and not trim it down too much but now have our basic structure again so yeah i think this is like a very useful way of um trying to understand the like lists of lists that get created within the grasshopper way because if we would normally need to run all over each of the things again and again and again and there are no like pairings in between those trees then you could run into like huge data kind of computational power so um you should always kind of have some kind of like data structure that you want to have them communicate with it. and then it also creates a more kind of visual pleasing way of in your structure or in your way of um creating like an automatism in a way so yeah i hope this helped you out a little bit about the tree structure within grasshopper it's a little bit of a tricky topic and there are a lot a lot a lot of different interesting ways of how to manipulate those things further especially with like the path mapper for example which is a very interesting topic and um also with there are tonless like countless um add-ons that are can actually manipulate those further and it can get quite complicated very very quickly um but yeah but this is like the, just the basic tree structure and how you can kind of think about it and so yeah this was actually a um recommendation from a viewer so um i think this is a very kind of data from a data point perspective kind of an important uh, thing to cover so yeah thanks for the suggestion and see you in the next